Hello and welcome back to Abstract Linear Algebra, the video series where we extend our linear algebra knowledge to general vector spaces. And in today's part 7, we start talking about the important concept change of basis. We already know that we can use the so-called basis isomorphism to translate between a general vector space and a very concrete one, and now we will talk about what happens when we choose a different basis. However, before we start with these definitions, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, via PayPal or here on YouTube. And please don't forget to download the additional material with the link in the description. Okay, then let's immediately start with the topic by considering an abstract vector space V. And now we assume that this vector space has a finite dimension, so we can choose a basis B with n elements. And as always, we call the elements of the basis B, lowercase b1, b2, and so on. And now we know we can use the basis isomorphism phi b to translate v to fn. In other words, now we are able to calculate everything in our common rn or cn. For example, b1 is now just represented by the canonical unit vector e1. This means on this lower level, the whole basis looks much easier. Okay, so this should not be news to you, because this is what we have done in the last videos. And now we want to extend the whole thing by introducing a new basis C. Hence, there we also have n elements, and we call them C1, C2, and so on. So obviously this is not a problem at all, we just consider another basis, and then we also have another basis isomorphism. Indeed, the picture is exactly the same, we also map V to our Fn. But now, instead of B1, we map C1 to the first canonical unit vector. And then we map C2 to E2. And of course, this continues, which means this basis is now represented by the standard basis in Fn. And now please keep in mind, choosing different bases in V totally makes sense, because we could have different problems we want to solve. This means, if you want to solve an explicit problem, you would choose a suitable basis in V. For example, you could choose the basis in such a way that in your calculations a lot of zeros are involved. Or in other cases, you want to respect the symmetry the problem has. So in summary here, you work in the same vector space V, but depending on your problem, you want to choose a different basis. Hence, what you want to know is how this switch is represented here on the lower level. So you could say, how can I change the representation I have with the basis B to the representation I have with respect to the basis C. And exactly this translation here on the lower level is what we call change of basis. Okay, then I would say, let's go into the definition there. First, recall that our basis isomorphism is a bijective map. And moreover, it's a linear map defined by using the basis vectors as said before. So bj is mapped to ej in fn. This implies that we already know what the inverse phi to the power minus 1 does. Namely, it sends fn to v and it maps the canonical unit vector ej to bj. So we also see that in the picture above, it's simply this arrow backwards. Hence, each abstract vector v can be represented by a coordinate vector. Or more precisely, we would write v is equal to phi inverse of this coordinate vector. So this is the general idea and we can look at an example again. And maybe let's take the polynomials now. More precisely, I want the polynomials with degree less or equal than 2. And the notation we have chosen for that is P2 of R. And there we already know a basis, namely the one that is given by the monomials. So let's call them M0, M1, M2. So these are functions from R to R given by M0 of X is equal to the constant 1. And M1 is simply the linear polynomial given by X. And finally, m2 is given by x squared. So now from the last video, you already know how to show that these vectors in the abstract vector space are linearly independent, 
and obviously they span the whole P2. This means we have a nice basis in our P2. Then let's look at an example P given as P of x defined by 3x squared plus 8x minus the constant 2. So now the question for you is what is the coordinate vector in this case? So obviously you can write P as a linear combination of the basis vectors. So first we have minus 2 times m0 and then we have 8 times m1 and also 3 times m2. And here please note we have to respect the order in the basis. And then you should see we find our coordinate vector as minus 2, 8, 3. And if we put this into our phi inverse we get our abstract p. Hence the basis isomorphism here is the translation you should never forget. Only with that in mind this vector in R3 has the meaning of a polynomial. Ok, now for this example let's write down another basis C. So there we know also this basis needs three elements. And maybe let's say that the first two are exactly the same. So C1 is M0 and C2 is M1. And moreover let's say C3 is a polynomial given by the following formula. So it's C3 of x given by 3x squared plus 8x. Indeed it's not so hard to check that these three elements in our polynomial space are linearly independent and they also span the whole P2. Therefore also in this case we can write our P from before with a coordinate vector. However now with respect to our basis C. In fact you should see we can take C3 one times, we don't need C2 but we need minus 2 C1. So this is the coordinate vector that represents the same polynomial as before. So you could say it looks a little bit simpler than before but also the basis looks more complicated now. And with that you already see we could have completely different coordinate vectors representing the same P. And the change between these two is what we call the change of basis. And after this quick example I would say we are now ready for the general case. So we could call the coordinates with respect to B the old coordinates and the coordinates with respect to C the new coordinates. So you see what we need here are the two bases B and C. And moreover we need the knowledge that both can represent an abstract vector V. In fact we already know this is given by a coordinate vector in Fn. So let's say the coordinates here are called beta1, beta2 and so on. And on the other hand I want to have the coordinates given by gamma1, gamma2 and so on. And then our general question is always what is the relation between these two column vectors. And there please never forget on the upper level the vector v is the same. In fact it's just given as a linear combination of the basis vectors. Of course we can have different linear combinations for the same vector. But still if we fix the basis these coordinates, these coefficients are uniquely determined. However please remember our general idea with the coordinate vectors was that we don't have to go to the abstract level. So maybe again as before let's draw a quick picture. There is our general vector space V and then we can go to the concrete level with the basis isomorphism. And moreover we also know we can always go backwards with the inverse. But as I said before we don't want to do that all the time because we want to stay at Fn and calculate in Fn. Therefore if we change the basis from B to C we want to go directly from Fn to Fn. And maybe let's call this map lowercase f. And from the discussion before we also already know we can always go backwards so we also have the inverse. Indeed we already know this map f we call the change of basis. And obviously it has to be a linear map. So it's a linear map from fn to fn and it's also bijective. And there we already know the inverse of f is also a linear map. Ok and now we can just write down how the map is defined. 
So we take an x from the domain and this x is first put into the map phi b inverse. And after that, we just apply the map phi c. And that's all. We just have the composition of these two maps. So you can remember, we first translate back what the matrix B does, and then we represent the result with respect to the basis C. So this should not be so complicated as it looks, because we already know from linear algebra that each linear map between Rn and Rn is given by a matrix. And of course, the same also holds for a linear map between Cn and Cn. In other words, we could write down this change of basis as a matrix. And in fact, this simplification is so important that we use the next video for that. So I really hope we meet there and have a nice day. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.